Hoover tonight. He is just the second NCAA Division I head coach to accomplish this feat. And now he has a career record of 1,200, 203, and 1. Presenting the commemorative plaque is Associate Athletics Director, Senior and Women's Administrator, Marilyn Moniz Kohohano Hano. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, a nice round of applause for Dave Shoji. Outside hitter, six foot sophomore from Kailua, Oahu. Number three, McKenna Granado. <laughs> and defensive specialist, 5'8", freshman from Manhattan Beach, California. Number five, Emma Smith. And middle hitter, 6'5", freshman from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Number six, Natasha Burns. And center, 5'11", freshman from Torrance, California. Number 10, Noreen Yosia. And opposite, 6'4", senior from Honolulu. Floor captain, number 14, Nikki Taylor! <laughs> At Libero, 5'8", junior from Kalihi, Oahu, number 15, Savannah Kahakai! And that middle hitter, 6'3", junior from Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada, number 19, Emily Maglio! <laughs> the Hawaii staff, director of operations, Kaleo Baxter, volunteer assistant, Tom Pestalacy, assistant coach, Lindsey Berg, associate head coach, Jeff Hall, head coach for your Rainbow Wahine, Dave Shoji. Welcome to the Stan Sheriff Center, the Hawaiian Tell FCU starting lineup scrolling in the bottom right corner of your screen. It is senior night, the final night to be played in this building in front of these wonderful fans for the senior class of four, Rainbow Wahine, serving first here to start against UC Santa Barbara. And the outside swing is Lindsay Ruddins returning back to action here recently for UCSB. She missed some time with an injury. Dug up by Noreen Yosia there. Emma Smith bumps says McKenna Granado. And we've got a lengthy rally here on the very opening serve. The middle set, the dink goes down for Phoebe Grunt. She's a good one. Third in the Big West Conference in hitting percentage in 346. And a nice long rally. You're going to see lots of rallies. Both of these teams are extremely defensive. So look for long rallies this evening. So. Emilia Petracci, 5'6", sophomore from Italy, with the serve. And that is a smackdown by McKenna Granato. And Mc McKenna Granato had a great, great evening playing against UC Santa Barbara when they were up on the mainland. She carried the load with 13 kills. Hawaii, 21-5 overall, 14-1. They clinched outright the Big West Conference title run. On senior night, how fitting is it that Nikki Taylor's first serve bounces on the terror Well, she's, she's taken off from where she left off the other night against Cal Poly. She was bombing balls. That's her 114th ace on the season in her career here. Yeah, her 49th just this season alone, and here it comes again. The pass by Petracci. Middle set, hit long. Was there a touch? It goes off of the palm of Elizabeth Sheffield and out for a Hawaii point. It's three serving one. Interesting enough, UC Santa Barbara trying to run their middle, establishing it real quickly. Gauchos 18 and 10 overall. They're 9 and 6. That's good enough for fourth place in the Big West Conference. And another brilliant serve by Nikki Taylor. And she is locked in from behind the service line here to start the senior night. And this is a scary thought when Nikki Taylor gets a hold of this ball. She really puts some heavy heat on it. What she's been doing lately is taking a little off after a hard ball like the first one. You saw parents Graham and Kim. And that one she tried to take something up. I mean, she was showing the full array there, but that one she pulled the string a little too far. And 
It's a point for UC Santa Barbara. But Nikki Taylor, she did not hide the fact that she felt like this was going to be an emotional night for her. She is one of those individuals who tends to wear her emotions on her sleeve. And so certainly, even in the introduction line, you could already see a little bit of welling up in the eyes. This is going to be a special night for her. Absolutely going to be an awesome night for her. Ruddins plugs it through the block and down. Lindsay Ruddin, 6'2", redshirt freshman from Aliso Viejo, California. Tops on the team with 4.2 kills per set. That's second in the Big West Conference in kills per set behind, of course, Nikki Taylor. Yep, and she's been leading her team all year long. Maureen Yosia goes high and away to McKenna Granado, dug up by Petracci over the net, so a free swing for Maglio. Good job by Petracci to keep it alive. Ruddins off the block and down. What makes Lindsay Ruddin so tough? But what makes her tough is that she sees the court so well. Here we have an incredible defensive play by Petracci on the up. But Ruddin sees the court extremely well, and she hits high off of the hands. She's a sister that's currently playing at USC, so she may be from an extremely athletic family as well. Lexi Rotman sends that serve out, though, and so Hawaii jumps back in front, five serving four coming up. Four seniors who will be celebrated at the conclusion tonight includes Annie Mitchum rotating into the contest. Here it comes from McKenna Granado. Outside Ruddins, one hand save attempt by Savannah Kalakai for not. And what's happening right now is that Santa Barbara is passing the ball extremely well. So they're in system, if you will. Hawaii's got to put a little bit more pressure from the service line like we saw Nikki Taylor doing. Hawaii has won their last nine. The last eight have been by way of sweeps. But this is not a UC Santa Barbara team to take lightly by any stretch, let alone on senior night, let alone in what can sometimes be described as a trap game coming off of clinching the Big West Conference Championship as Emily Maglio knocks that one out of play. And so it is now six serving five Ruddins to serve. And there's so many distractions on senior night. You know, these, these gals get intertwined with a lot of emotions, family members here and the hula dances or whatever they're gonna do after. Lindsay Ruddins is off and running here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Three kills on five swings, no errors. That's an ace right there. And the Gauchos are up two here in the first. And she's only a redshirt freshman. She sat out last year after a medical hardship and had some downtime earlier like you shared, Fanoa. And that ends the run there, the serve into the net. That was a 6-1 Gaucho surge. And now Emily Maglio back behind the service line. Six serving seven here coming up. Good pass there by Ruddin. She does a little bit of everything. And the touch over was very unorthodox, but it was effective for Chloe Allen, six foot freshman from right there in Santa Barbara, California. One of seven frosh on the roster. Extremely young team. There's only two seniors on UC Santa Barbara's team this year. Out serve there though, and Hawaii gets it back, so. There's a buzz in the air for sure, right? A sea of white here on Whiteout Night at the Stan Sheriff Center as you take a look at Nicole Lantane Welsh in her fourth season. In her first season in 2013 led UCSB to the first ever share of the Big West Conference title, shared it with Hawaii and CSUN that year. Backside set Taylor with one blocker up and she absolutely annihilates it. Well, it may as well have been no blocker up the way she got a hold of that ball. My goodness. She unloaded completely, almost straight down in front of the defensive player, Petri Petracci. Taylor hitting 273 on the year, had 11 kills, hit 296 the first meeting between these two teams back on September 23rd, a win for Hawaii. Here's Annie Mitchell getting her first crack at it. Didn't get all of it, good dig there by Petracci. And that one hit into the antenna by Chloe Allen. Averaging 1.75 kills per set. And Hawaii jumps back in front. And Chloe Allen getting an opportunity to step in for the hurt and not even traveling Chanel Hoffman, which was their go-to player. She was second in kills. She did not make the trip. Yeah, injuries have been an issue for this UCSB team the last couple of seasons. Otherwise, an extremely talented roster for sure. Speaking of talent, Annie Mitchum continues to flash her abilities on that outside hitter position. And Annie Mitchum just has continued to evolve on the outside, getting better and better. As we take a look at the replay there, she just gets a hold of it again. If you see where that ball lands, it's in front of the yeah. three-meter line. I mean, she was putting dents in the floor here at the San Sheriff Center the other night against Cal Poly. Outside, and that was a little blast from Chloe Allen. 
Holly Allen has 64 kills on the season, hitting at 156. There she's got a huge hole in the block and decides to go down the line anyway. That ended a 4-0 burst for the Lady Bows. And now Hannah Julie, 5'10 redshirt freshman from Illinois, a transfer from Wisconsin, where she served a redshirt year last year. Here's Nikki Taylor on the outside, pinballed around and returned. Well done there by the Gauchos. Advantage Hawaii, though. The slide to Mitchum. Pounds it down. And that's the versatility that you have with the young lady who started in the middle on that slide. Wow, she took up on one foot and just hung up there. Another a complete annihilation. I mean, with what she can do on the outside pin, and then you have that versatility certainly along the net. Plus, you can set her on the pipe. As you see, Natasha Burns play it off the net, and then Nikki Taylor on the second contact just drops the hammer, another point for Hawaii. But you're now seeing the evolution of a Hawaii transition offense that is more styled after the men's game. Oh, so much more physical. They're just taller and they're stronger. They're a much more complete team right now than they were early in the season. Allen off a of one leg dug up by Kahakai. You'll see it outside, Granado. And there was a touch there, called by the up official, Kevin Cole. So it's a point once again for the Rainbow Wahine. And interestingly enough, McKenna Granado is so undersized, but she just has worked so hard to contribute and keep her place on this team. Gaucho signal a timeout. Hawaii up four in set one. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Lisa. Well, for the Gauchos of Santa Barbara, they need to execute. Right now, they're doing a pretty darn good job. They're hitting at 267. And for Hawaii, it'd be so nice to see them dominate this so that they can yeah. move on and celebrate. Celebrated the other night, though, clinching the outright Big West Conference title. Win number 1,200 for Dave Shoji. He was recognized prior to the introductions tonight, as you see Lindsey Ruddens also able to hit that pipe set, able to knock that one down from the back row. With her fourth kill on the evening, they are going to her quite often. That's her seventh set or attack, if you will. And so 10 serving 13. This is Sydney Bass now from Upland, California, redshirt sophomore. Another player who was granted a medical redshirt last year, played just six matches before a season ending in the and we got a free ball coming here for the Rainbow Wahine. First touch, Emma Smith, tight to the net, one hand set by Yosia. Burns couldn't put it down. Putting it down, though, for UCSB is the veteran 6'4 senior, Phoebe Grunt. She's the team captain. And Phoebe Grunt has been with Coach Langtang Welsh the whole time, and she has just really blossomed. Coach could not say enough positive things about this young lady who is very unselfish and has worked very hard for her team. Big West Conference honorable mention last year, Natasha Burns. She is still very much in her infancy as a Rainbow Wahine, but we are seeing her making strides here throughout the season as she has gotten more and more time in that second middle position. And only a redshirt freshman. I've continued to be impressed with her as well. She just holds her own and she does a nice job in the middle. Redshirted last year with a broken hand. Good looking swing there, but missing the court was Megan Rice. Yet another frost. We mentioned seven freshmen on the roster from Hermosa Beach, California. Was born in Torrance on the 4th of July. So that's not bad on your birthday. You get all those fireworks. That's a great birthday. That's a great serve from Savannah Kahakai. That is a great serve. And let's see if she goes back to that same area. It's a deep floater. And you can hear the UC Santa Barbara players screaming in and in. But she just got it right into that deep pocket. Third service ace already for Hawaii here in this opening set. 15, make that 16 serve and 11. From set back row, Sydney Bast. Dug up by Yosia. Here's Granado. Right off that block and down, and Hawaii up a half dozen. Granado had a fantastic match the first time these two teams met. 13 kills hit, 478. She's at it again tonight. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC Sports is sponsored by Straw and Hawaii Honda Dealer. Welcome back. Stan Sheriff Center Hawaii on senior night here in set one up by six against UC Santa Barbara. And that was a hammer from Megan Rice. Third team ABCA All-American 
Well, at Redondo Union High School, that's the same high school that produced Noreen Yosia, yes. There's some serious volleyball talent there. She's been in Hawaii before. She was all tourney earlier this year, her senior year, I should say, in high school at the Ann Kang Invitational. You'll see on the set goes middle to Mags. She goes off the hands and out. And that's Maglio's first kill on the evening. In the pregame show, we heard Olivia McGill talking about trying to distribute the ball a little bit more into the middle. And uh, that's what I agree with her strongly, that they need to establish their middle as well. Here's Nikki Taylor attacking the libero, Petracci. Outside swing by Ruddins, and Hawaii hasn't been able to figure Ruddins out, and I think that will be the theme for her career. The key for her is just staying on the floor. And the key for Hawaii right now is going to get, try to get them getting a block. They have no block so far this evening, and that truly is the strength, I think, of this team. Ruddins, a five-time Big West Conference Freshman of the Week. Middle set, and that one put down by Elizabeth Sheffield. Good looking transition sequence for UC Santa Barbara right there, Lisa. And Sheffield, a really interesting player in herself. She played two years of club volleyball at UC Santa Barbara and then ended up coming out for the team. She had a high school injury and she really didn't get recruited her senior year. You'll see it goes outside Granado. The blockers weren't up, but she caught the tape. Here's Ruddin's roll shot. And Kahakai and Taylor both hesitated and it fell in front of them. And that has been one of Hawaii's weaknesses earlier on in the season. The roll shot, UCLA really played that one on them. But that's a smart play by Ruddins, mixing it up a little bit. 3-0 run here for the Gauchos. You'll see a tight to the net. Granado unable to put it down. Bump set to Ruddins, winds up, uncoils, dug up by Emma Smith. You'll see it goes backside, D set to Taylor, caught it fat. It goes long, no touch. And UC Santa Barbara within two. Dave Shoji wants to talk things over, so he signals for a timeout. Gauchos on the comeback. Welcome back. The series record sponsored by Aston Hotels and Resorts Hawaii leading the all-time series 38-8. to The last meeting was actually the first match of Big West Conference play on the road for Hawaii against these Gauchos, and they won by way of a sweep. But the Gauchos have strung four straight together here and out of the timeout. The set goes outside to Granado off the net, so she couldn't get the usual contact with it. A little mix-up on the communication on the side of the Gaucho. So Granado a better crack at it, still dug up. Middle set, diving save by Kahakai, tapped over by Granado. Gauchos go outside, it's Ruddins, high hands, Emma Smith tracks it down. You'll see it. Outside, Granado, the roll shot block, popped up in the air by Maglio. You'll see a sets Maglio when it looked like there was a joust opportunity there, and Maglio puts it down. That is an incredible, very advanced play by Noreen Usia, doing a fabulous job. It looks, you're on the replay, like she's going to jump and block it, but she turns and set the one, giving Maglio a n no one up. Second kill for Emily Maglio. Hawaii just two hitting errors so far here in set one. Ruddins, big swing, got blocked. Scramble play by the Gauchos. Free chance here for Hawaii. You'll see it outside. Annie Mitchell dug up in the back row. Beautifully done there by UCSB. That was best. Here's Taylor on the D set. Detonates it. Taking a quick look at the incredible defense in the backcourt by Beth. But that one box, Nikki Taylor drills balls down the line, and then she goes into the deep, what we call the one box, the service area. That is almost impossible to defend that ball. Three kills for Nikki on eight swings, hitting 250. And the serve into the net from McKenna Granado. Kendra Kelsch into the game. Looks like she was in for blocking substitution. But you'll see a quickly back in, and Kalei Greeley comes in to play the back row for Granado. Kalei Greeley, the 6'2 junior from Riverside, California. Was supposed to be one of the outside hitters for Hawaii, but it's really because of her offseason shoulder surgery. The reason why Dave Shoji had to experiment on the outside and why Annie Mitchum ultimately has taken a stronghold of that outside hitter position. Put over on the second touch nicely. 
by the center, Hannah Julie. And back to Kaleg, really, you know, she's still contributing to this team in a lot of different ways, primarily, of course, from the backcourt. She doesn't even really come in and serve, but she's always joked she's the big girl in the backcourt. She passes extremely well. 134 dig on the year for Greeley. Taylor has to just bump it over. Gauchos go outside, and that is Chloe Allen able to get that one off the block and down. And Chloe Allen tooling the block, hitting high off of Noreen Iosia's right hand, purposefully going for the high hands. So a 7-2 run here by UC Santa Barbara. They're within a point. As we head down the home stretch of set number one, good first touch by Kahakai. Magli goes high hands, saved by Ruddens. Middle set, dug up by Kahakai. That was Sheffield with the swing. Mitchell couldn't get all of it. Chance now for the Gauchos. They go slide to Sheffield. Blocked. Played off the net by Petracci, and Hawaii now in control. You'll see a step out to Maglio. That one dug up by Rotman. We play on. Back row set, Ruddins. Got it inside that back line. And that is just some incredible defense by both teams and coming out of the back court on an unassuming set. You got to give their setter a ton of credit. Off of the dig, Kahakai in the back, middle back, but the rallies again going real long and Ruddins just out of nowhere. So call it a 4-0 run, making a clean 5-0 run as Ruddins drops the ace in front of a diving Annie Mitchum and the Gauchos have jumped it front. Dave Shoji signals for a timeout. Welcome back to the Stan Sheriff Center. Let's send it over to Ryan Kalei Suji. Ryan, glad you're back with all. us. Thanks, Kano. Well, one of the strategies for uh, the Gauchos is to target Annie Mitchum in serve receive. The last three serves have gone to Mitchum, and the coaching staff continuing to remind their team the game plan. Make Annie Mitchum pass that first ball. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot. Good to see Ryan back here in the mix with us. Our condolences certainly to Ryan and his family. Mitchum unable to put that one down outside. The touch shot by Allen finds the floor, and Hawaii beaten by the dink again. It's kind of become the nemesis, if you will, and they've just got to make the adjustment. They came out swinging hard and swinging fast and strong, and now they're backing off with the dink. So Hawaii's defense has to honor that and stay back. A 6-0 UCSB run, and it's another ace. Mitchum unable to handle the run and serve, and look at this turnaround in set number one. Well, what they're doing now is they're going to take Annie Mitchum out of the passing um, and push her up a little bit, change the serve-receive rotation. Largest lead for Hawaii was six at 18-12 here in this opening set. Greeley handles the run and serve. Back row set to Taylor, dug up by Petracci. And it's sent over by Ruddins. Hawaii with the advantage. Slide goes to Mags, blocked, punched up by Kahakai, knuckled over by Maglio. Set to Ruddins, touches it over from the back row. Claimed by Yosia. so Kahakai sets outside to Mitchum down the line. That's saved by Rotman. Bubs that goes to Allen, puts it down with authority. And UCSB has Hawaii against the ropes. Aloha ball in the first. Some great defense again by UC Santa Barbara. And swinging away the six foot freshman, Chloe Allen. Diving pass by Greeley. Here's Mitchell. Big swing off the block and down. But Hawaii with some work to do if they want to try to get back into this first set. It remains Aloha ball for the Gauchos. And who else but Claire Marie Anderson to come in and take care of the serving specialist duties. She is certainly one of Hawaii's go-to servers. Has to get it in. Does so. Pass by Ruddins. Ruddins gets it from the back row and she ends set one. UCSB absolutely flips the script midway through the opening stanza. Trailed by six. They win by four. 25-21. And Hawaii has a buzzsaw on their hands. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC Sports is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii, Kaiser Permanente, and Island Air. Well, Lindsay Rebels all 
that she has been advertised to be, Lisa. Eight kills, 17 swings, zero under the error column. Well, hitting at 471, she is quite the impressive freshman, completely carrying her team from everywhere on the court, not only from attacking the ball, but serving the ball as well. Having a great evening so far. Meanwhile, Hawaii having its share of struggles in that latter portion of the first set. This is a team that's averaging almost three blocks per set. You see that number right there in the bottom right corner of your screen. Zero blocks on both sides, but that has been a calling card for this Hawaii team. And look at the digs. Amelia Petrocci has 10 digs. She's coming off of three straight 20-plus dig performances. She is tops of the Big West Conference in that category, and she's showing all of it. You know, and she's what, the first international player that UC Santa Barbara has had in 15 years. I actually, actually spoke with the coach and asked if she went out recruiting her. She said, no, she sent us her video. And when I saw it, I said, I got to get this girl. And she's the real deal. The newest line of UH Apparel and Spirit items are now available at the eight zone stores at Ward Center and in the Stan Sheriff Center. All proceeds benefit UH teams and student athletes. You can also shop online at hzoneonline.com. Sydney Bast will serve here to start set two. UC Santa Barbara takes the first 25-21. And Granado sends it long. Was there a touch? No touch called. She thought there was a touch. The players are looking at Dave Shoji, urging him on to maybe challenge. I don't think he's going to take the bait just yet, maybe a little too early to bust out the green card. He wasn't 100% sure if it was worth the effort. Savannah Kahakai almost overran that. Middle set to Natasha Burns goes off the block and down. So what did you see happen in that first set? Why such the violent swing in the momentum? UCSB going from down six to winning by four. UCSB's defense was amazing. They kept coming up with balls, and then on transition balls, their tips are hitting high up the balls. They hit a very high hitting percentage at 395 in that game. Here's Granado, and she fires it through that block and down. I'm also going to say, Hawaii's block, I'm going to go back to that pass to get on track. That has been their go-to. It really gets their momentum going, and it's a quick point owner for their team. So far with zero blocks, that's hard to believe. Served by Kahakai. Set goes middle. And Phoebe Grunt, the senior from Alameda, California, was the winner last year of the team's Golden Eagle Award. That goes to the top GPA on this UC Santa Barbara squad. She's majoring in chemical engineering, my former major. Yeah, and look where you're sitting now. <laughs> <laughs> you called my bluff on that one. I like it. Here's Granado from off the net. Good save there, Hannah Julie. Back bump set to Ruddins. Made it work. Lindsay Ruddins right now is an equation that Hawaii is having a hard time doing the math on. Well, it's almost like they have to slow their block down on her just a little bit. If you, do, if you notice, she's hitting high off the hands. If they wait a little tiny bit longer, they won't be used most likely as much. Middle set, Maglio dug up by Petrachi. That's her 11th dig. The right side set, it's Megan Rice. Sends it wide, and Hawaii gets the point. Megan Rice, one of the seven freshmen out of Hermosa Beach, California. Plays a lot of beach volleyball. Was highly recruited. Former teammate of Noreen Yosia. So she used to get some of those ripe nectars that Yosia likes to put out now for her Hawaii teammates. Taylor sends it into the twine, and so UCSB jumps up. And you know, that was one of the concerns, right? Hawaii with such an overpowering performance a couple nights ago, and it meant so much to clinch the conference crown, to give Dave Shoji 1,200. They had the celebration, the silly string, all of that. The concern was that they would come out a little flat tonight. And while that wasn't the early indication in set one, we're seeing a low here from Hawaii. Definitely a low, and somebody's got to pick it up. This is when the leadership really has to come into play. Somebody's got to own this, want it, and put the whole team on their back and take control of the match. Second hitting error for Nikki Taylor. Five serving three, and that's in. That's an ace. Granado and Emma Smith left staring at it as it pings up against the end line. And Lexi Rotman from my hometown, Santa Barbara, California, also from my alma mater, Santa Barbara High School. <laughs> Uh, she's tied for service aces, leading the team. That's her 32nd on the year. 
diving second touch by Yosia. Granado almost able to put it down. Now Ruddens the touch shot. Taylor had it covered. You'll see it high and away. Granado against a solo block. And this one goes out of play right in front of us. Granado putting some serious heat on that ball. Remember when they played UC Santa Barbara the last time at the Thunderdome, McKenna Granado had a fabulous evening. Granado didn't put down the first set, but how about that first set by You'll see a diving to her right and was able to one-handed style touch it up and actually provided a pretty good set outside Ruddin's big swing but it tightrope walked the top of the net and it finds its way out of play first hitting error of the evening for Lindsay Ruddin's she has just been a beast so far tonight still hitting 381 Hawaii back to within one the pass by Rotman here's Ruddin's Got the fingertips of the block. Good save, Kahakai. So bumps at cross court to Mitchum block. Mitchum pops it up. You'll see the touch. Oh, the savvy play by the fantastic freshman for Hawaii. And you've got to love it. Noreen Asia doing a nice job. Again, hitting over, taking the opportunity and hitting it over on one. And we're going to give that the nod for the Fujitsu air conditioning cool play of the game because there have not been too many cooler freshmen when it comes to the poise on the floor from what we've seen from Noreen Yosia. Here's Mitchum. And slapped up in the air by Rotman. Ruddins from off the net goes down the line and wide. And a point for Hawaii. They jump up. And that is the third lead change already in this second set. Thanks to a 4-0 rainbow run. And Granado's tough serving. She's really putting some deep floaters in the court right now. Attacking the sophomore Lexi Rotman. Back bump set to Ruddins. Another save by Kahakai, just protecting that back line. Here's Mitchum, big swing off the block. Right there's Petracci. Ruddins, the dink. Punched up by Yosia. Second touch, diving play by Kahakai. And a free chance here for the Gauchos. Slide goes to Sheffield. And that is the first block of the night for the Rainbow Roofers. And that could be a game changer. You never know that once they get their block going, it seems like other things start kicking into place. I mean, it's like a slam dunk in basketball, right? It can serve as sort of an ignition. It can serve as a spark, perhaps even more so than an overpowering kill. Absolutely. I think for this team, it does. Eight serving six. Good pass by Ruddins. Middle set. Sheffield hit it long. No touch. Point for Hawaii there on three. And Nicole Lantane Welsh will signal for a timeout. Welcome back. Let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. Big West individual hitting. Nikki Taylor is tops. In fact, 15th in the country. 4.53 kills per set. Lindsay Ruddins on the other side of the net. She's in the number two position. Neela Barber from Long Beach State in third. But right now, UCSB hitting negative 231. We've seen a couple of hitting errors from Ruddins after nine kills without an error. Hawaii on the other side hitting 167 here in this second set. Bump set, Mitchum up over the top of the block and down. What are you going to do about that? You can't stop that is what I'm going to tell you. You know, she is so explosive to the ball. As she comes in, she just has this incredible wind up and goes up and over the ball. So Charlie Robinson comes in for Elizabeth Sheffield, another middle hitter, six foot freshman. Big surprise there from Pacific Palisades, California. Manoa Leahy and Lisa Strand Ma'a. We say hello to Chris McLaughlin traversing the continent of the United States. Oh, good dig there by Petracci. Step out. That one barely got over the net, but Maglio returned it to the sender. And those are those frustrating little unbroken plays. Even Maglio was making funny faces there. On the replay, a step out that is just a totally, what'd you call that, a, a purse with a, a, a paintbrush? Paint That's paint your brush. new word, right? The paintbrush. <laughs> Granado into the twine. Yeah, you're going to have to come with something usually a little bit more powerful than the paintbrush against Emily Maglio, I guess. I think just a little bit more. She's got the hang time up there. At least a roller, right? With an attachment. <laughs> Her long arms. 
There's Ruddens. Diving pass by Greeley. It's a good one, though. Outside, it's Mitchum from off the net, so couldn't get the full contact on it. Middle set, Robinson's dug up. Bump set by Kahakai. Mitchum, bigger swing. What a save by Petracci. That was brilliant, but a mishandle by Ruddens on the second contact wipes away the effort of Amelia Petracci. That was a gorgeous dig, her 15th of the match. You know, she's all over the court, and she just sits in that little hole. She sees it and reads it for a perfect dig. Slide. Sorry, Charlie, says Natasha Burns and Annie Mitchum. I know you're just waiting to say that one, but you know, setting the slide into Annie Mitchum is probably not the smartest set. We saw it with Cal Poly, we're seeing it tonight. She blocks the slide very well there in the left front. High and away, set goes to Chloe Allen in Hawaii, unable to come up with the save. Mixing it up again with that tip shot, just confusing Hawaii's defense. UCSB was preseason picked to finish sixth in the Big West Conference, but head coach Nicole Lantane Welsh, who you saw right there, pulled in the 18th ranked recruiting class two off seasons ago, according to prepvolleyball.com. And so they are on pace to really fill this roster with a whole lot of talent. The problem has been the injuries the last couple of years. Good contact there by Burns, but the dig by Maxine Burke, who just entered into the match. Mitchum, quick reset, and she just knocked it to the open part of the floor. And Andy Mitchum doing what she does so well, seeing the court and using so many different shots. Not only does she swing away, but then she takes something off of that and places the ball perfectly. Showing some good court awareness there. It's 14 serving eight. Here it comes from Noreen Yosia, second on the team in aces. Back row set, Ruddins. She slams that one into the deep corner. Tenth kill now for Lindsay Ruddins on 30 attempts. So they are going to her often. They sure are, and she's doing a fabulous job. Again, deep into those corners. Very hard to defend that ball. Short serve there by Hannah Julie. Nikki Taylor. Oh, that was devastating. Julie was sitting in on that. She got a good piece of that. Nikki Taylor drilling the ball down the line. Redshirt freshman setter from the Gauchos just screaming, somebody come on. So Taylor, one of the seniors. Here's Annie Mitchum. Also Taylor Higgins, the reserve setter. I'm sure we will see her at some point tonight. That hit by Allen goes long. Another point for Hawaii. Also Katiana Ponce, 5'3", serving specialist. Out of Moanalua High School, there she is, there's Anna. A timeout taken by UCSB. We'll take a break as well. Hawaii has created some distance here in set two, trying to even this match up. Welcome back, let's check out tonight's Jack Fact. Clean sweep, oh yes indeed. Big West Volleyball Weekly Honors. You had the Player of the Week that went to that woman, Nikki Taylor. Defensive Player of the Week went to Emily Maglio. And Freshman of the Week for the second time went to Noreen Yosia. I mean, that is an unbelievable accomplishment. And it just goes to show how well this team has been performing in the Big West. Taylor going deep corner. Ruddins chases down the second touch and Petracci will return it. Mitchum handles the first contact. Here's Taylor, no return in that move. Again, some great defense by both sides of the court. Nikki Taylor getting a perfect set by Noreen Yosia, splitting the block, getting her almost completely isolated. So three players leading the way with five kills for Hawaii, Taylor, Granado, and Mitchum. As a team, Hawaii hitting 318 in the second set. UCSB still in the negative, negative 087. Overpass there, Burns couldn't terminate it. Here's Rudin from the back row. Misses wide, no touch. And Hawaii dodging some Rudin's bullets, literally and figuratively here in set two. Literally, and Natasha Burns, you know, did a nice job up at the net putting that ball in place, but uh, Rudin's just a free ball. Mitchum tickles the tape. And Hawaii up double digits. 19 serving nine coming up a 5-0 Rainbow Wahine run. 
And that's when you get a little bit lucky when you hit the top <laughs> of the tape. Here's Allen, couldn't touch it over. And now we're seeing some discombobulation and perhaps a little bit of leaking confidence on the UCSB side. Part of that soap opera drama that plays out during the course of any sporting event. Well, absolutely. There have been so many unforced errors on their side of the net right now. I think they're just trying to find some sort of a groove to get back into. Here's Ruddins from the back row over a triple block, diving up by Mitchum. Second touch, Kahakai, but Burns couldn't quite knuckle it over. Unbelievable defense. First contact by Annie Mitchum, spreading it out or sprawling it out, if you will, in the backcourt. And then Kahakai with her left hand showing her athleticism. Annie Mitchum, who did play six rotations at Irvine Valley Junior College as a middle hitter. So it's not foreign to her, but how impressed are you with the transition she's made since moving full-time to outside hitter? Well, I think I'm more impressed than I ever thought I would be. I think she just continues to get better and better, and I would not be surprised if she didn't end up on our U.S. national team. Good dink there by Natasha Burns. Yeah, you still get the feeling when talking about Annie Mitchum that she is merely scratching the surface, and that is sort of the most exciting and if you're on the other side of the net, scariest proposition when talking about Annie Mitchell. She's just the perfect volleyball prototype. She's tall, she's strong, she's lengthy. And she's out 344 days, and now she's finally back. And look, she continues just to get better wherever you put her. Here's Kahakai to serve, 21 serving 10. Middle set, good dig there by Yosia on the Phoebe Grunt offering. Granado is dug up by Petracci. Here's Ruddins, high hands, nobody had the ricochet off the block. UCSB putting a few good plays together here. Interestingly enough, their setter, Julie, is a redshirt freshman, but she was she redshirted at Wisconsin. Wisconsin is ranked number three in the yeah. nation right now, so she got some seriously great reps going on. Hey, leading her team nicely as the setter. She has high hopes and aspirations. She wants to play professional volleyball overseas when she's power with college. Here's Annie Hasselman, a six-foot sophomore from San Diego. With the serve, Maglio the touch. Bast, back bump sets Rudd. It's big windup, and she's able to get it past that proposed double block. And that's kill number 13 for Lindsay Ruddins. Just racking them up. And Lindsay Ruddins probably on her way, potentially to being Big West Freshman Player of the Week again with these numbers. Passed by Kahakai, right side set. It is Taylor off the Ruddins block and down. Yeah, I mean, between Ruddins and Noreen Yosia, I mean, you're talking about Freshman of the Year honors. I mean, that's going to that's gonna be a photo finish. It's amazing. They're so well accomplished as freshmen. They're playing so well above their heads. Noreen Yosia running this offense as a freshman. She does some moves that are amazing. Her experience on the court, she's so calm, cool, and collect. Served by Taylor, passed by Bast. Here's Ruddins. Oh, she just continues to do things to hurt this Hawaii defense. 14 kills now for Ruddin. She's hitting over 300. And again, she's moving the ball around really well. Notice how the, their sets are a little bit off so that it's allowing her to work the ball around the block. Little set, here's Maglio. She puts a hurting on that offering. And that's a great play, spreading it out a little bit, spreading the offense out, getting, once again, the middles involved in the offense. That cut set or a three set, if you will. Quiet night against Cal Pauly the other night for Mags. Just three kills on 12 swings, so they would certainly love to get her back in rhythm here. Final regular season tune-up for Hawaii, right? I mean, they won't play for a couple of weeks until NCAA tournament time, now that they know that they're in. Nikki Taylor misses the court wide there. And tune up, but also, you know, you look at the ailing bodies out here. Everybody's had, it's been a long season, a little bit of rest off, and we've seen Nikki Taylor get a day off here and there and come back so refreshed and ready to go. Question only remains, where will the NCAA selection committee send this team come Selection Sunday, as Ruddin sends that one home. There will be some time to ponder that because Selection Sunday isn't until two Sundays from now. Yeah, there's a, a lot of wondering. But knowing the NCAA, heck, 
They might be sent to Siberia to play in front of the Shoji Suns. Who knows? Here is Anna Ponce, one of the seniors, being honored tonight. Reddins has to two-hand it over. So Taylor sets up Mitchum a little tight to the net. The dink, the diving play there by Rotman. Reddins from the back row, punched up by Ponce. Taylor on the D set. And yet a couple of seniors involved with that one. Hawaii takes set number two, 25-14. And we are all even Steven here at the Stan Sheriff Center on senior night. We'll head into the intermission with a match very well in front of us. Gauchos, 12 hitting errors as well as the dig. But, uh, you see Santa Barbara Gauchos out digging Hawaii, which rarely we don't see that. Everything else seems or appears to be very even across the boards, if you will. And that's why I think both were stuck here at game one game of peace right now. Yeah, both teams going through lulls at different times through those first couple of sets. Kanoa Leahy along with Lisa Strand Maha here courtside. Uh, you commented on the set distribution on the Hawaii side, giving a lot of credit to Noreen Yosia, the setter for Hawaii. It's crazy. She's got three different hitters with 17 attempts each in Granado. Uh, Nikki Taylor and Annie Mitchum, which, I mean, somebody on the sideline isn't telling her set here, set there. She's doing it, and she is per she has so much precision in her distribution. It's really nice to see that many players getting those opportunities. 12 attempts also for Emily Maglio. She only had 12 attempts all of the match against Cal Poly the other night. And that distribution is huge because it really challenges your opponents as they're blocking. They don't know where you're going to go next with the ball. Early in the season, we saw so many balls going only to Nikki Taylor. She carried such a huge load. She was doing, she had seven matches where she hit over 40 total attempts. And now we're getting more even dis distribution. Turned into an impromptu dance party here uh, at the end of that intermission. But we are now playing volleyball once again here in set three. Savannah Kahakai had the opening set, the touch shot, pinballed around, and then a block at the net by Maglio on the swing by Megan Rice, the dink by Rudin, sniffed out by Yosia. Kahakai, cross-court set to Granado, net violation against UCSB, and Hawaii wins a hard-fought, high-effort sequence. And again, another really hard-fought, and long rally, and that's exactly what they need to do is win those long rallies. Savannah Kahakai serving, has six digs, had four digs, her season low in the first meeting with UCSB. Won by way of a sweep by the Rainbow Wahine, but I mean, Savannah Kahakai, you're talking about someone who has reached double-digit digs, 20 of 26 matches here this season. Good swing there by Phoebe Grunt for UCSB. And dig column, what you'll notice is she won't have as many digs because you're blocking more often. So sometimes it takes away from the numbers on the defender. Yosia, high and away to Granado, blocked, punched up by Yosia. Back bump set, Smith to Granado. Diving save by Sydney Bass, that was a pretty one. Ruddins is dug up by Yosia. Here's Taylor through the double block and down. Well, we saw flashes of defensive brilliance on both sides of the net there. And one of my favorites was Noreen Yosia on the coverage. She does a one-arm defensive joust at the ball. And here again for Santa Barbara, best hitting the ground. One-armed as well. So Nikki Taylor serving, and that would be one of those Chris McLaughlin touch them all calls. That one, uh, Really kept the people sitting in the front row on the court. I mean, you got to keep your head on the swivel. That caught their attention for sure. You definitely need to pay attention. There was no top spin on that baby. It just went <laughs> soaring and kind of elevated on its way out. <laughs> two serving two here in set three. We're even at one set apiece. Hawaii and UC Santa Barbara on senior night for the Rainbow Wahima. Little pitter patter at the net. Ruddin's a better swing. One hand dig. Kahakai. Back bump set. Smith to Granado. Roll shot right there is Petracci. UCSB on the second contact, the dump shot is blocked back. Ruddins, what a save by Smith. Diving save by Bass, great rally here. Here's Ruddins again, misses wide. And Hawaii gets the point. But we're gonna have a challenge from Nicole Lantane Welsh. She is going to request a touch on that last Ruddins swing. But let's look at Kahakai, the one hand save
save. And then, Lisa, how about this? The freshman, Emma Smith, the left hand save. Well, you know what? That comes from, I'm just going to have to say the truth. It comes from playing a lot of beach volleyball. And Emma Smith plays a lot of sand volleyball, and she's working really hard. Coach Nicole Lang Tang Welsh immediately jumped up and reached for that challenge card. She felt strongly that there was a touch off of that play. And we are under the impression that she wants to challenge the touch there on that swing. Um, it very well could have possibly made contact there with Emily Maglio's left hand. But again, going frame by frame, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to pick up. What do you think here, Lisa? I think there is. You see a deflection on the ball out to the left. I think it caught Maglio's hand on the left side of it. Not positive, but boy, they were. she was off the bench immediately. Yeah. So I'm thinking there was a touch. There was no hesitation on that challenge. Wayne Lee about to make the call, and he calls a touch. So Wayne Lee down on the floor. Kevin Cole, as we mentioned, on top of the ladder on the opposite side. Ryan Scudder, Dean Tamura, the two line judges. So UCSB gets the point. They're now up 3-2 as opposed to the other way around. And I just love that challenge, you know, that you can challenge a call and that, that it's limited, that you only get three for the match. Here's Taylor on the D set, solo block up. And she gobbles it up. That's her ninth kill of the match. It's so interesting to see the top two hitters in the conference duking it out here at the Stan Sheriff Center. And that's exactly what they're doing. Nikki Taylor with nine kills and Ruddens with 15. Ruddens with 41 attempts already this evening. Yeah, Taylor just 19, hitting 316, the serve by Granado. Set goes outside, Ruddens over the block, dug up by Kahakai. That's dig number eight for her. Here's Mitchell. Bast able to pop it up in the air. Bump set to Ruddens from off the net. Roll shot dug up by Mitchell. Where does Yosia go? Middle to Maglio. And that one touched the Terraflex despite the layout effort by Lexi Rockman. And Maglio doing a nice job of attacking the ball hard and then dropping that ball in. Holding the defense way back, Lexi Rotten not quite able to get under that ball. So four serving three. Here it comes again from Granado. For the knuckleball serve. Rudden's big wind up and she uncorks one. We're tied at four. Rudden's has a very interesting arm swing. It's a little, it's a little slow. It's almost like she's hitting heads up there longer and then gets the ball by the blockers. An extremely highly rated high school prospect. Mentioned just six matches last year before season ending injury. Missed some time this year with injury issues again as Mitchum hits the pin. So another point for the Gauchos. They're up five serving four. And notice how they took Annie Mitchum out of the serve receive. Now she's moved herself up so the Gauchos can potentially not get the ball to her on that first contact. Ruddens came into this match with 31 aces tied for the team lead. Pass by Taylor. You'll see a quick middle to Maglio. And that's a very successful attack of the net, all made possible. But that first contact with Nikki Taylor passing, you don't often see Nikki Taylor in that passing rotation. So Mag's back to serve. Natasha Burns into the front row to play the middle. High and away it goes to Allen. And Allen had a little smoke trailing off of it. Gets it right by Nikki Taylor. Allen with her seventh kill on the evening. Only a freshman as well out of Santa Barbara, California. And she is a physiology major, aspiring to be a personal trainer one day. Here's Mitchell. Hard to stop that, Lisa. Very hard. And again, very explosive to the ball. Sees the ball, the block well, and hitting high off the hand. Just watch her drive to the ball. She puts everything in on that attack. Six serving six, here's Noreen Yosia. The reigning Big West Conference Freshman of the Week. Deals an ace out of the deck. Noreen Yosia doing a nice job getting some topspin on that ball. Contacting the ball on the right side. The Gauchos rearranging their serve-receive lineup. 29th ace on the season for Yosia. Forces a pass tight to the net. Allen pounds it off the block. Burns goes down, grabs the right ankle. Here's Mitchum. She's dug up by Ruggins. 
Running from the back row off the block. Greeley there. You'll see it outside. Mitchum blocked him roof. A rarity these days, certainly. But it was Hannah Julie on the outside pin next to Phoebe Grunt. And I'm going to let you know that Burns has to come out. She's signaled the coach. She does, she's in pain. She's really struggling, not wanting to put any pressure on her. I believe it's her left ankle. And so Casey Castillo, the 6'3 sophomore from Oceanside, California, checks in. Burns will be looked at by the training staff, and that is poor timing, certainly at this juncture of the match. I guess the only silver lining is that Hawaii has some time off following tonight. Mitchum's soft touch is dug up, and then a much harder touch from Phoebe Grunt. And some great defense and again Petrachi spreading it out and setting a quick one off of that. That's a daring set. So here's the serve by Julie, the setter. High and away set to Taylor. Only one blocker out there. And the odds definitely in Nikki Taylor's favor under those circumstances. And again, Nikki Taylor hits one rotation in that left front. They tend to utilize her very often on the left front. Mostly we'll see her attacking from the right side. But again, she's all around. She is a true six rotation player who can stay on the court and hit from anywhere. At 15 kills the other night against Cal Poly, hit 242. She's into double digits with that effort. And now Emma Smith to serve for Hawaii. We're tied at eight in the third. Competitive match here so far. Savannah Kahakai fields that one. Backside to Taylor. Again, just one blocker up. You'll see him keeping him guessing. And continue to isolate. Castillo driving hard in the middle. Here you'll see Casey Castillo going in. She held the middle blocker there, which allowed what we call a one-on-one. -on -one. And really, it was almost a one-on-none. So nine serving eight. Here it comes from Emma Smith. Outside Allen, the dink, two-handed up in the air by Taylor. But Castillo and Granado looking at each other. This is a tough situation for Casey Castillo. The, the quick change, if you will, because of the injury to Natasha Burns. And we will await an update on that. But that's a difficult proposition, right? It is, but you know what? Casey Castillo played in their first match against UCSB, and she had seven kills. She had a phenomenal match in Santa Barbara. She's just a little cold. Yes, a little tough, but I think she can do the job. Oh, Granado, that goes off of the block and up near the rafters. Ruddins from off the net, dug up by Granado. You'll see a backside. Taylor, the touch shot. Diving, saved by Julie, punched over. You'll see it goes middle to Castillo. Pinballed around, it was Petracci with another dig. You'll see it. Castillo again blocked in roof. Phoebe Grunt was waiting for her, the team leader, with 74 blocks coming into tonight. And again, another long, long rally from both sides. I love that you'll see us trying to get Casey Castillo involved offensively. Right side here, Taylor threw the double blocking down. When in doubt, though, right? When in doubt, you know where your outlet is. And what's scary to think is that the opposing team also knows where the outlet player is, and somehow they cannot stop her. You see Santa Barbara still without a block in this whole match. So 10 serving 10. Here it comes from Kahakai, two-handed by Ruddins. Middle set grunt with a crush. And UCSB jumps back up. And you gotta credit the Gauchos, man. They are feisty. They just continue to work hard, spreading the wealth. Middle set, Maglio through the block and down. This is Cecil as it gets right about now. And again, spreading out that hit, the attack, the middle blocker spreading further out to beat the block. All right, let's check in with Ryan Kalei Suji. He has an update on Natasha Burns. Ryan. That's right, Hawaii trainer Renee Shigemura and team doctor Dr. Elizabeth Ignacio right now tending to Natasha Burns in the tunnel right now, going through a series of tests, focusing on that right knee at the moment. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Scary anytime you're talking about a knee. She initially looked like she had grabbed at that right ankle, but certainly some concern for Natasha Burns. Here's Taylor from the back row. Another long rally here. Sheffield is blocked by Maglio. Ruddins the tip right there is Taylor. You'll see it. Goes to Granado off the block and down. 
Now these are the kind of rallies that both of these teams are working so hard. And when Hawaii comes out on top, this is the kind of volleyball they want. And they said this was a meaningless match in the Big West Conference. You gotta love the competition. Another race from Nikki Taylor. And she definitely got a hold of that one. This time she got on top of that ball and it completely bottomed out. Thirteen serving eleven. Outside, Ruddins over the double block. Was there a touch? No touch. It goes out. Point Hawaii, they're up three. Nicole Lantane Welsh certainly wanted the touch call. Instead, she's going to signal for a timeout. Hawaii up 14 11 in the third. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken. 149. That's Hawaii's opponent hitting percentage this year. That's best in the Big West Conference and 10th in the NCAA. UC Santa Barbara comes in averaging 232 in the hitting percentage department. Tonight for the match, they're hitting 208. What does that say? Well, it just says that they're hitting a little bit better than... It says that Hawaii hasn't gotten the blocks yeah. that they've gotten earlier, what we're talking about earlier. It's just just team. two team blocks on both sides here tonight. Outside Ruddins, the hesitation, and Hawaii couldn't return it despite the valiant effort from Emma Smith and Nikki Taylor. Little pinball. Yes. Pinball defense in the backcourt. Nikki Taylor getting a hand on that. She has gotten so quick defensively. At 6-4 going down to pick up that ball. Lexi Rothman tied for the team lead with 31 aces. Had four aces all year last year. Heard of us her season total. As Taylor unable to curl that one in. No, she is. It was signaled out by one line judge, signaled in by the other. Ultimately, though, Kevin Cole overrules everybody. He is the uh, almighty one in this scenario. He mm -hmm. said it was out. When you're standing on the top, that's what you get to do. <laughs> that's right. Granado is blocked. Here's Taylor from behind the line, dug up back over the net by Petracci. You'll see a backside, Taylor. And even Amelia Petrachi wasn't able to pop that one up. You know, she was sitting in the right spot, but a little bit too much heat on that ball. Beautiful backseat set away from the flow by Noreen and Lucia. So Hawaii first to 15, 13 kills now for Nikki Taylor. Raising her game here in what has turned out to be an extremely competitive match. Ruddins off the high hands, popped up by Taylor, saved by Granado and sent over by Kahakai. Middle set, the whiff, and Hawaii gets the point. And Hawaii's defense again, just moving so well to the ball and in system, if you will. Out of system to in system. Look at this effort, Taylor. Granado, then Kahakai. Just brilliant defense for Hawaii. Here's Annie Mitchum with the swing from off the net. Outside Ruddins. The touch shot didn't get over. And she's frustrated with herself. It's a four point advantage for the Rainbow Wahida. And Ruddins with 54 attempts. She could possibly be slowing down just a little bit. She's still hitting at 245, but that's a lot of balls to carry. And for someone who was out of commission for three matches, that certainly is a high total to try to return to action with, right? It's like out of commission. It's just, just a little bit of like a Nikki Taylor, if you will. And she's a red shirt freshman. Looking to burn up the record books for UC Santa Barbara in her career. You'll see it goes outside Mitchell. the height, look at the point of contact. Somebody check the floor. Time out, UCSB. Welcome back, let's check out some Twitter talk. Tom Pestalacy, yeah, Coach Pesto, come on Bose, sending positrons from home. Our condolences certainly to Tom and his wife Diane, Diane's mom.
passed away. So that is why Pesto not on the bench here tonight for Hawaii. And this match on senior night against UC Santa Barbara. And we send on behalf of OC Sports and our Ohanas much aloha to their Ohana for sure. Mourinho Theo catches UC Santa Barbara off guard. And you just know Tom Pestalesi on senior night for Annie Mitchum, who he was so involved with in terms of her development in junior college as her head coach and now here this her senior year in Hawaii you know he wanted to be here so uh, glad to hear that he is still watching and that he's still root rooting the bows on you know he's like her second dad he has done everything to help Annie and to grow her and to help develop her he's definitely with here her here in his spirit and in his heart he'll continue on with the team once he gets back from this trip after that hit for sure. Annie Mitchum now with eight kills, hitting around 200. And it is a 6-0 Rainbow Wahine run. How about this? As you take a look at Annie's dad, that is Mark with the Aloha shirt. Yeah, he knows he's on TV. Yep. How about this dad, though, here in this third set? Elisa, it was tied at 11, right? And up to that point, there had been 11 ties with six lead changes, six then. Hawaii has gone on a run and they've distanced themselves, although it is now a six point advantage after that kill by Lindsay Ruddins. Well, it's amazing how similar both of these teams are. And here we take a quick look at Ruddins off of the back bump set, finding the hole for her 18th kill on the evening. Here it comes from Ruddins, passed by Taylor. She'll get the set from the back row. Pounds it off the high hands and down. Mickey Taylor looks fresh here in the last regular season match of the season. She really does, and that was almost like beach double. She took that first pass, she passed the ball, and Iosia just sends it right back to her, and she sees the court again so well hitting high off the hands. 14 kills for Nikki, hitting 357, and Anna Ponce, the senior, back out here. Cousins with the Correa family. Of course, a couple of the Correa brothers playing football at the University of Hawaii, talking about Haku Correa and La'anui Correa. Of course, another one of their brothers, Kamale Correa, now playing in the NFL for the Baltimore Ravens. And you talk about jeans, I'll tell you, that young lady, she has two older sisters that both played college volleyball as well, and she's been here five years in the program. Lettered three years at Moanalua under head coach Tommy Lake over there. And, and a great program, certainly producing much talent. Anna Ponce now a senior. Here's Mitchum, sort of backhands it over the net. Ruddins from the back row touches it over. Mitchum the save. You'll see a jump set to Castillo in the middle. And that one didn't quite work out the way everyone had envisioned it. Well, she had done that exact play earlier in the match with Maglio and was very successful, but her and Casey Castillo not quite in sync yet. Casey again just into the game for Natasha Burns, who went down with a potential uh, knee or ankle injury. Here's Taylor from the back row, dug up by Ruddins. That was a sweet dig. Allen is blocked back. Reddins from the back row, dug up by Taylor. Advantage Hawaii, you'll see a high and away to Mitchum. Gets it down again. Kill number nine for Annie. And Annie not getting a great approach to the ball, does a one-step approach on that, and hits, again, just powering through the block. So 22 serving 16, and it will be Noreen Yosia to serve. The high toss, down the line it goes. Back row set, Ruddins, wherever she is, they are finding her. That was her 60th attempt here tonight. Allen sends it long, no touch, and Hawaii gets to 23. Allen trying to go for that deep corner. Look to UC Santa Barbara to try to slow things down a little bit here. And how about the ovation for Taylor Higgins? That's chicken skin. And she's chuckling herself too, like, oh, this is going to be, she has such a great attitude. Out of Punahou, five, nine senior. Allen blocked by Taylor. And 
Two handed over. Chance here for Hawaii. Higgins will set outside to Mitchum. Dug up by Petrachi. That's her 20th dig of the match. And then Ruddens is able to find the terror flex. But Taylor Higgins getting a well deserved ovation. I mean, this is a player who led this team to the Elite Eight in the NCAA tournament last year. But along comes this incredible freshman talent in Noreen Yosia who takes over the starting position at setter, and Taylor Higgins could not have handled it with more grace and class. And she truly has, and here she's getting the opportunity to come in and set, and I'll tell you what, she's gonna do a phenomenal job because there's not a huge step off there. I really believe that. Good old Taylor-made set, right? Taylor Higgins to Nikki Taylor. Taylor to Taylor, they've played for years together on club volleyball and also here at the Stan Sheriff. It's a low ball for Hawaii in the third. Mitchum will serve. Ruddins from the back row pounds it down. It's almost a strange look. On that last serve, there were three seniors on the floor for Hawaii. Like, when's the last time that has even happened here for this program, especially with all the early season injuries? Yeah, it has not happened. They've had, there's just been a rotating door, if you will, of different players coming in and off the court. What's also neat is that they're two local players. Yes. They have been here all four years. Punaho for Higgins, Kaiser for Nikki Taylor, the dink by Castillo. Scramble play, UCSB. Hawaii with a chance to finish it. Where does Higgins go? Backside to Nikki with the hammer. And Hawaii takes set three, 25-18. They'll swap sides, but the seniors leaving their fingerprints on that third set. Ryan Kalei Suji has an update on Natasha Burns. Ryan. That's right, Kanoa. Natasha Burns currently on the sideline with ice on that right knee. I talked to uh, head doctor, Dr. Elizabeth Ignacio. She said that uh, Natasha Burns will not be returning tonight to this match. And she emphasized tonight to this match. Not sure. Uh, they're going to be probably doing some tests after this match. But again, Natasha Burns out for the rest of this evening. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. That's big news. And that is certainly cross your fingers time if you're a Hawaii fan. This is a team that will have a little bit of a break prior to the start of the NCAA tournament. So hopefully that will be enough time for Natasha Burns to get all good again. But uh, that is a scary proposition, certainly for that to happen on the last regular season match of the season. Oh, that's so scary. But, you know, she's in great hands. Dr. Elizabeth Ignacio does a great job with this team. And they will probably get right on that as soon as this match is done to find out what is really going on with that knee. Natasha Burns, who has been such a valuable piece. You talk about the blocking numbers for this Rainbow Wahine team. It's been the calling card, and Natasha Burns has played right into that. You know, she has, and she redshirted last year due to a, an injury in her finger. And so she's been off and slowly working her way back into the lineup and has done a nice job continually contributing to the team. So Hawaii takes set three, 25-18. They hit 304 compared to 159 for the Gauchos in that third stanza. But it will be Maxine Burke to get things started, and she starts with an out serve. And the five three defensive specialist freshman, not how you want to start game four. So then Kahakai back to serve. by Ruddins, middle set, the dink, diving pancake save by Yosia. Second crack at it for Phoebe Grunt, and she's able to find just inside of that sideline. And Phoebe, floor. Phoebe Grunt doing a nice job off of the pancake dig. Marini Yosia getting right underneath that ball. Excellent defense. One serving one here is Anna Julie. Bump set, Granado, big swing, Petracci the first touch. What an effort by Lindsey Ruddins. Taylor. And Nikki Taylor doing what she's been doing all night long, getting another kill, just wrapping him up from that right front. 17 kills so far this evening. On 32 swings. Meanwhile, Ruddins has taken 62 swings. Still has the energy to do that, though. 
By the way, career high this season for Lindsey Ruddins again. Just a freshman, that's scary. 65 attempts. She is going to absolutely obliterate that total here tonight. She's at 62 already. Great serve by Taylor. Beautiful pass when you consider that by Petracci. Chance for Hawaii, though. You'll see ya. Back side to Taylor, dug up by Petracci. That's her 22nd dig. The block there on the Chloe Allen swing, sent over. You'll see it goes outside. Granado off the block and out, point Hawaii. And McKenna Granado, that little missing piece to this team that we haven't seen a lot of tonight. That's her eighth kill, only one air hitting at 259. So if you're just joining us, we're in set four. On senior night for the Rainbow Wahina, ranked 14th in the latest ABCA poll. Middle set, Grunt is blocked back. It's punched over. Maglio couldn't get it over the net. UCSB was down six in the opening set, came back to win 25-21. It was the first set given up by Hawaii in nine matches. But the Rainbow Wahine turned things around, won by 11, 25-14 in the second, 25-18 in the third. So an opportunity to close things out here in the fourth. But this has been a feisty gaucho squad, to say the least. I think the history of UC Santa Barbara is always feisty. That's a great description of this team. <laughs> How about another fantastic save by Petracci? Granado! Wayne the smackdown! You know, she might be a little bit undersized, but I will tell you what. That was probably the hardest hit ball I've seen her do so far in her young career as a wingman. It must be contagious. She wanted a little piece of the pie, you know? <laughs> she sees Annie Mitchum bouncing all of these sets. That one had some angst attached to it. And then Granado follows it up with an ace. And let's see if she goes right back at her. Going to the redshirt sophomore defensive specialist, Sydney Best. Granado, a former teammate of Taylor Higgins, one of the seniors being celebrated tonight at Punahou. Also, Claire Marie Anderson, part of that tremendous Punahou team. That's a nice looking slam by Phoebe Grunt. And Grunt with her eighth kill, zero errors. She has, she is one of the only two seniors on that team. She's got a heart of gold, and she is trying to emotionally bring her team and hold her team in this match. Yeah, Elizabeth Sheffield, another one of the middle hitters. She's the other senior. Both middles, they're gonna lose both middles this year. Part of the reason why they're working in, Charlie Robinson, number 11, into the middle hitter position in this rotation. Here's Taylor. Oh, the block was up. And that was running solo style. And that's the third team block, setting into probably one of the bigger players. Nikki Taylor has been moving the ball around all night around that block. And with that, UCSB now out blocking the Rainbow Wahine three to two in total team blocks. When's the last time that has happened for this Hawaii team? Mitchell dug up by Petracci over the net. That's dig number 24, by the way, for the Italian. Mitchum dug up again, but Maglio says enough of that. And finally puts it down. You can dig so many balls, but if you over dig them, you put yourself back in the defensive mode immediately. So here's the overdig. Maglio doing a nice job, just going on very aggressive, staying out of the net and attacking. Eight kills for Mags. She's hitting 316, and she's back to serve. Into the net. Well, Hawaii with seven service aces, but also with seven service errors. So basically a wash. Yeah. Do you take that ratio? You do. You take that ratio. I mean, it's like, you might as well start at 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> really the pass. Here's Mitchum. Roll shot. Pancake saved by Rotman. And a free chance for Hawaii. No, Bast wasn't able to get it over the net. And Rotman's father, Steve, played volleyball. Here we take a look at Rotman getting the ball up. Her father played at USC, so from a very athletic volleyball family as well. You'll see a attacks Rotman, forces the overpass, fielded by Castillo. Taylor off the block and down. So there was an opportunity for Castillo to maybe take a crack at it. 
but a good choice in playing it instead. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's where you are in the game, and if she doesn't feel comfortable, if it's a little further off than that, then she'll take that first contact and allow the setter to determine what to do with the ball. Nikki Taylor having a solid senior night. 18 kills in 361. Here's Ruddens dug up by Greeley. Right side, Taylor through the block and down. She is rolling right now, Lisa. She's just having a phenomenal evening, and she knows it. She's having fun. An awesome dig. She turns, she gets off of the net, and that's a really difficult set to hit coming off of her right shoulder. You'll see it. Attacks Rodman again, and the slide mistimed. Four touches on the UCSB side. Point for Hawaii. Nicole Lantane Wells relegated the signaling for a timeout. Largest lead of this fourth set for Hawaii. Welcome back, senior night at the Stan Sheriff Center. Stick around for the Heineken postgame show coming up right after this match. Our corner crew will break down all tonight's highlights and stats. And we'll also interview, hopefully, a couple of the players. We'll have the senior festivities following tonight's match as well. And you know what? It keeps getting longer and longer and more and more sentimental. And I mean, it's turning into like, a show of its own. They could sell tickets separately for the senior night festivities on top of the actual match. I think they did. Look at the crowd around us. It's a whiteout night. I, they're, it looks very full here in the stand share of tonight. Nicole Lantane Welsh, very aware of the importance of this juncture here in this fourth set. If UCSB is to extend this to a fifth, they're going to have to make a move very soon. And that's why she called that timeout. She saw the separation. Hawaii really creating huge separation off of the great serving by Noreen Asia. And that is yet another facet to this Hawaii team. Yosia and Nikki Taylor, just a couple of the servers, when they get locked in, they can have long and very prolific stretches behind the service line. And the jump serve just automatically puts the opposing team on defense. They're back there immediately on defense, and the ball comes faster and um, stronger at you. 6-0 run for Hawaii. You'll see it. Petracci pops it straight up in the air. Here's Ruddins trying to end the run. Dug up by Greeley, tight to the net. Popped up by Yosia. Mitchum puts it down. And a little bit of a broken play there. A little off play, but Mitchum again, bettering the ball. Yeah, a little lucky with that rat tap with that left pop-up. Whatever works. Tenth kill for Mitchum. You'll see him. Forces the overpass. Taylor. And again, what can you do to slow that down? And another timeout called by the Gauchos. Hawaii starting to run away. Time for How It Works, presented by Central Pacific Bank. Lisa, take us through it. Noreen, you see it in the front row. Takes this ball, jumps like she's gonna hit it over and actually sets Maglio on this ball, holding the Gaucho's blocker run in. Total fake out. Very awesome, very high IQ play by Yosia, the freshman. She has also been putting on a show here behind the service line. A long run here. Another great serve. Petracci with a beautiful pass though. Ruddins in the middle, the triple block was up. So Allen from the back row pumps it long. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. And the Gauchos stopped the bleeding. That was a huge scoring run by the Wahine. Eight points in a row. Six serving 14 now, and it's Ruddins behind the line. She enjoys paddleboarding in her spare time, so I'm not sure if they'll hang around here in the islands enough for her to be able to do some at one of our local beaches. Good well, one-hand save, Petracci. I think she's earned it. If she, <laughs> the way she's playing, you got to get that girl out on the paddleboard and get her in the ocean. The roof was up. Annie Mitchum getting the gist of that. Yeah, I'm just not sure if Ruddins after tonight will have enough energy to paddleboard, right? She might not. She might just sit out there on that paddleboard. 65 attempts for Ruddins. That ties her season high. But now the block looming a little bit for Hawaii as Mitchum serves it into the net. Senior night, again, Anna Ponce, Taylor Higgins, Annie Mitchell, 
Nikki Taylor right on cue. Taylor Higgins comes in for Nourinho Sia. And you just have to love the reception she's getting from the crowd. You gotta love that she's getting the opportunity again to come in and play senior night. She's contributed so much to this program in her four years. Her parents, James and Annie, comes from a football playing family. Dad played football at UH. So did brother Jeremy. Brother Cameron was a star at Weber State. Also had a younger brother, Parker, a linebacker at Kaiser. I mean, they all played football pretty much. And Taylor Higgins making a name for herself in the annals of Rainbow Wahine setting history. Well, she was like the quarterback of the team. So she exactly. was she was included in the football family. You're right. Touch shot by Allen. Higgins will back set Nikki Taylor off the block. Petracci bumps it to the back row. It's Ruddins high off the block. Oh, great effort by Kahakai and Emma Smith for not. And UCSB gets the point. You gotta love that they're chasing down every single ball. No matter where that thing is, they're turning and running, getting a hand on balls. That's gonna pay off deep into the playoffs. You know, you talk to these Hawaii seniors, Nikki Taylor expressed this just the other night. What amazes them, and I think this is kind of the sentiment every year for the senior class, they're amazed at how quickly it goes. You went through that. How quickly does it go? It goes so quickly, and, and Nikki Taylor had said it's a little bittersweet. You're in it, you're in it, you're in it. Sometimes it seems like you're in it forever, and then all of a sudden, it's coming to a close. And you know what I say to them? I say, welcome to the alumni. <laughs> That's right. We will always have a match for you. We will always. Sisterhood of the alumni. Maglio getting that last kill. That's her ninth. Here's Taylor to serve. Oh, that was a heater. Forces the overpass. You'll see a joust at the net. She wins the battle. She continues to win the battle at the net. I'll tell you what. You wouldn't think she talk about outplaying your size. Size at 5'11, she's probably one of the smaller players on the court that plays in the front court. Is what I'm talking about. Her timing is impeccable. And that's just instinct right there. It is. Great pass by Petracci. That's a load to deal with. The Nikki Taylor hot serve with some action on it. Emily Magley will start to see more action. That's kill number 10. She's the third Rainbow Wagine into double figures in kills. And Taylor Higgins back into the match, replacing Nourinho Sia. They have a very cool relationship, senior and freshman. Because they respect their team so much, they're looking at the, the better of the team as a whole, and each one of them continues to push the other. How about the overpass forced by Nikki Taylor. Maglio in the middle. Give the assist to Taylor Higgins. And it is all good right now for Hawaii. A 4 0 run. And they have opened up a 12 point advantage. And Hawaii is just feeling it big time, man. They are just all in the system. And this crowd is loving it. Taylor with another blast. Grunt is dug up by Nikki. Higgins, high and away. Granado off the block. Julie goes backside to Allen, popped up in the air by McKenna Granado. She'll get the set from Higgins block. Kahakai, back bump set to Granado, and a nice one. What a play. What a play coming off of her back shoulder. Granado not even able to see the blockers get along the court and swings deep into that far corner. McKenna Granada with her 11th kill. Check out this back bump set. So four players into double figures in kills for Hawaii. 21 serving eight here. It comes from Nikki. Took a little something off. Bump set. Here's Megan Rice dug up by Emma Smith. Back row to Taylor. Puts it down. Kill number 22 for the All-American. And Nikki Taylor just having it way not only from the back line, but from attacking as well. She will go down as one of the greats to ever put on this Rainbow Wahine uniform. 12th player in UH history to reach 1,300 kills and currently chasing Dietra Collins. Soak it in. This is the final time you will see Nikki Taylor playing in this building. 
except for the alumni match, of course. Granado from off the net, hard angle and in. And Hawaii is leaving no room for misinterpretation. Nikki Taylor being taken out. And he, Dave Shoji, wanted to give Nikki Taylor this moment. And you gotta love it, half the stand, the crowd here standing for Nikki Taylor. Kendra Kelsch with the serve. Middle set, it's Grunt blocked and roof. And it's Aloha Ball. And the sea of white will rise to their feet here on senior night. And the Gauchos just really not sure. They have just gotten off their tempo. Here's Allen. Was there a touch? No touch is called, but Nicole Lantane Welsh is going to challenge the call. And I think, actually, I'm going to have to go with her. I thought that there was a touch on that. And you know, it's, yeah, there's a huge gap in the score. Sure. But you've got to do it. If sure. you feel like there was a touch, you've got to challenge it. And the crowd's not going to be happy. They're going to have to go through the inconvenience of standing, right? Because once you commit to standing, you got to stay standing, even if Wayne Lee is looking over the replay. But I do think she has a legitimate case here if we get a look at the replay. And I agree with you in either way. It's still game point, no matter what. It's still match point. It would be Maglio getting the touch. And I thought I saw some of those fingers on that right hand move. Yeah. And we will see if the crowd has to continue standing or if the match is over. You know, it would be kind of an anticlimactic finish if he doesn't overturn this. Headsets off. Is it celebration time yet? There's a touch. It's celebration time for the gauchos. <laughs> yeah. they, get to, they get to extend this a little further. Aloha Bowl once again. Substitution, though, as Sydney Bass comes in. I'll tell you what, Nicole Lantane Wells is coaching to the very end of this match. She is, and you know, she's done a phenomenal job with her team. They came in here, they're so scrappy. Against the nine-time Big West Conference champions, Hawaii. Anna Ponce, the senior, fields it. The senior, Higgins, on the slide. The Maglio played off the block by Kelsch. Granado goes cross-court and wide. And the crowd still standing. Oh, you can't move. You can't move. Yeah. We'll try it again. Out it goes. And that's your match. Hawaii victorious on senior night. They got the job done the other night, affording them the opportunity to truly focus on senior night tonight. And then they get the job done on the floor. So let the festivities begin. Let's check in with Scott Robbs. He's with Dave Choji. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Well, Coach, your final regular season match. You guys got pushed a bit, and that's probably a good thing. Well, we had a lead in game one, and then their best player went back to serve, and it, she's tough. I mean, she had eight kills and no errors in game one and served us off the court, so we got a little nervous there, but uh, I think we rebounded well and played well in the last three games. Did you see Yossi and Ruddens being co-freshman of the year in the conference? They're both so good. I'm not sure how that's going to come down, but uh, Noreen got my vote. <laughs> yeah, I know that. All right, Dave, now the real season 
begins. You're going to have probably close to two weeks off before you hit the floor again. You've been in this situation so many times. What's the game plan leading up to uh, the NCAAs? Well, I think the game plan is to rest rest a little bit. We'll take two days off and go back to work on Tuesday. Go Tuesday, Wednesday, take Thanksgiving off, Thursday, uh, go Friday, Saturday, and then wait for the selection show on Sunday. And then it'll depend on where we go. If we go west, then uh, we'll do it one way. If we have to go Midwest, we'll do it another way. Think this team's good enough to get to the Final Four? Well, you know, you got to take them one at a time, Scott. You know that, right? Um, you sound like a coach. Well, I am a coach. <laughs> and so um, it's going to be a difficult road, but, you know, we got a long way last year. I, I just don't want to look past round one. Good luck. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. All right, guys, back over to you. Well, it will at the very least be a happy Thanksgiving for Dave Shoji and this Rainbow Wahine team. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. Lindsey Ruddins, 21 kills, three aces, six digs on 68 attempts. That's a new career high. And for Hawaii, of course, the four seniors, they will be honored. Lisa, I give you the final word. What do you think tonight? I thought a little bit of a slow start, but I'll tell you what, the way they finished, man, they had flames coming out, and I thought they finished very strong. An awesome way to go out for not only the seniors, but for all of the team sending off into the post playoffs. And now the real payoff, the treat, the seniors will be honored. They do it like no place else here in the islands. Stick around for the Heineken post game show and the senior festivities for Lisa Stranma. I'm Kanoa Leahy. Until next time, aloha. And welcome back to the Stan Sheriff Center. Hawaii has defeated UC Santa Barbara in four to close out the regular season. But it's time now to get the party started. We throw it over to public address announcer Ben Kiaaina. I'm waiting for the head. Go. Volleyball fans, before we get started with our senior night festivities this evening, we would like to first show you a video tribute dedicated to this year's seniors from your teammates and Noreen Yosia, who filmed and produced it. Take a look at the monitors. Hey seniors, this is from us to you. Hey seniors, this is from us to you. Dear Annie, it's been... Dear Annie, it's been an amazing ride. Four years getting to coach you, getting to know you, and it's just been um, really special, getting emotional. Very uh, excited and happy for what's in store for you in the future. Um, I've absolutely loved the opportunity I've been given uh, this semester, and it's a, it's a memory that I'll never forget. Any girl, don't think about getting that eye lift. I'm going to miss online shopping with you and buying way more Acacia than we both need. We'll miss you, Annie. Annie, your body is goals. Enjoy your chickens. See you in the future. Uh, Annie, I don't know who I'm going to tell when I'm excited that I saw a chicken or a little baby, but um, it's going to be weird without you. Hey, Nikki. You've been a huge role model to me. And I'm so excited to see where you go with your volleyball career, and I know you're gonna do amazing. What's up, Big Nick? Uh, funny how small the world volleyball is. If it wasn't for our cousins, we probably wouldn't have become such close of friends. Um, I hope you have a good future with volleyball. I just wanna say thank you. It's been a great two years. It's been fun to watch you develop and blossom. It's been fun to watch you play sand and indoor, and I uh, wish you nothing but the best in your future. And, Thanks for being so good to my kids. And Nick, thanks for teaching me how to be aggressive and press over. What's up, my home stars, Nicky? It's been an amazing three years, and I just love our time together on the, on the court, off the court. I just love watching you grow as a person, and you've been such a great friend and role model, and I'm really happy for you, but I'm sad for me, because I'm really going to miss you. Hi, Anna. Um, three years ago, I met you, and I am so grateful that you decided to take me under your ring. If it wasn't for you, I probably would not have been able to go through all the adversity I've faced, and I'm going to miss you a bunch. I can't wait to work at Disney with you. I hope you have a good time at the Disney College program, and I can't wait to be in your wedding. Oh, no! Oh, my gosh. You've been a role model for me since day one. You inspire me each and every day. You have such a positive presence on and off the court. One thing I miss about Anna is her yelling at me to clean up my locker. 
And thank you for always being the mom of the team and making sure all the balls are counted. And thank you for always being that light on the bench and for always sharing your joy and your kindness and for always caring for everyone. You're definitely your number, you're number one. I love Anna. Yeah, I think uh, when I introduce her at summer camps, I always introduce her as uh, Anna Ponce, our middle blocker, and then wait for the laughs. But no one ever laughed. Uh, but it's been a great uh, five years with you, Anna. A uh, great teammate, come to practice every day with a smile on your face. That's what it's all about, having fun. Uh, five years you were with us. Uh, that's what I call a, a true uh, Rainbow Wahine. It's been an incredible three years, and I'm so glad to have met you. You're an amazing person and such a hard worker. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss having you in practice and hearing your Mariah Carey voice in the locker room. Hey Higgs, just want to congratulate you on a great career. You've been an inspiration to many, a mentor, a leader, and I feel fortunate to have gotten to work with you for a year. So I want to wish you good luck in everything that you do in your future. Taylor Higgins, you are my Jay-Z to my Beyonce. You're my peanut butter to my jelly. It was so fun to be your locker mate and best friend playing out there. You know how much I love you and your whole family and everything you've done you just made me such a better person. Seniors, I'm sad we only got one season together, but I'm grateful to have been able to share your senior season with you guys. I just want to say best of luck to all four seniors. It's been a privilege and an honor to work with each and every one of you. To see you grow and, and become the people that you are has been truly amazing. All the seniors, I love you and wish all of you the best. Thank you for all your hard work. I'm gonna miss you, maybe. Wish you all the best. Go Bulls! You guys made this year so fun and memorable for me, and uh, you're the reason why this year was just the best year ever. Dear seniors. Dear seniors. Dear seniors. We, we love you. you. I <laughs> wish you the best. Bye, Bye seniors. seniors. Mahalo Noreen Yosia. Nice job. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2016 Rainbow Wahine Volleyball team will now perform for you. They will dance a song done by Weldon Kekaoha. Doing the song Lei Ho'oheno. It's for the fans here watching on TV, but they're dancing also, especially for the families tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Lei Ho'oheno, your 2016 Rainbow Wahine Volleyball team.
your 2016 Rainbow Wahine Volleyball Team. Fans at this time, please direct your attention to center court. Here, representing the University of Hawaii Federal Credit Union, our Vice President of Human Resources, Ashley Mahilona. Vice President of Compliance, Davin Hamada. Vice President of Marketing, Barry Carroll. Member Services Manager, Debbie Wilson. And UH Associates Athletic Director and Senior Women's Administrator, Marilyn Moniz Kaho'ohanohano. Our first senior is a five-year player who came to the University of Hawaii after graduating from Moanalua High School, where she earned All-League and All-State honors for Na Menehune. She has appeared in 62 career matches and 105 total sets, while posting 27 career digs and eight service aces. She will miss walking into the stand and seeing the amount of support they get and the amazing atmosphere of all the fans cheering. She will be graduating this December with a degree in travel industry management and in the spring will be heading to Orlando, Florida to attend the Disney College program at Walt Disney World. Fans, please show your aloha for number one from Eva Beach, Oahu, Katiana! Hans, a player that is a great example for all those local players out there here in Hawaii who have the dream of becoming a Rainbow Wahine, maybe undersized. She stuck it up for five years, didn't see a lot of playing time, but has become certainly a leader on this team. Uh, and really, you just got to love her attitude that she Joining brought to the practice on the court are her parents, Lisa and Anna Roy, is always walking into practice with such a good attitude. And she gives so much to the team. First joined by her sisters and her family out on the court. And again, this is a tradition that stems back to the 2003 senior class with Lily Kahamoko and Kim Willoughby. This, that class actually began this tradition of kicking a ball into the stands and has carried on till today. Ladies and gentlemen, Anna Pons. Our second senior came to Hawaii after a stellar two-year career at Irvine Valley College, where she was a two-time ABCA National Two-Year Player of the Year, playing for this year's UH Volunteer Coach and UH alum Tom Pestalisi. The Friendswood, Texas native suffered a pair of injuries that kept her out of the last 12 matches last season for the first nine this year. But since her return, she has made an instant impact for the Bulls. She has shifted over to play left side and has recorded 173 kills, 56 digs, and 55 total blocks in 18 matches thus far this year. She will miss her teammates and all the Rainbow Wahine fans. She will be graduating with a degree in sociology in the summer of 2017. Fans, please put your hands together for one last time for number eight from Friendswood, Texas, Annie Mitchum! Annie Mitchum, who said she knew she wanted to be a Rainbow Wahine since the sophomore year of high school, and of course had some setbacks that made her go to Irvine Valley College. Uh, but really, her dream was always to become a Rainbow Wahine. She ran into some Joining uh, on the court issues that Father prevented Mark. her getting here right away, but she persevered through injuries uh, and really just had a stellar end here in the senior season. Yeah, just going off what Ryan was talking about, Annie's overcome so much, and it's so nice seeing her develop into a great player like this, and she's had such a big impact, and it's such a short time, and it's really fun to watch her play. Annie Mitchell.
Our third senior came to the University of Hawaii after a stand-up career at Punahou School, where she helped lead the Buffin Blue to a pair of state titles and earned several accolades, including Gatorade State Volleyball Player of the Year. The Honolulu native has played in 108 total matches and has recorded 75 service aces, 527 digs, and 104 total blocks, and is ranked number 10 in the UH record books with 2,266 career assists. She will graduate in the fall of 2017 with a degree in finance. Fans, let's show our aloha one last time for number seven from Honolulu, team captain, Taylor Higgins. An emotional night you can see for Taylor Higgins. She's one of those players who just really embody what it means to be a rainbow wahine. When you think of the long history of great local setters, Robin Amo, Kanoi Kamanao, Danny Mafua, Taylor Higgins following in the footsteps of these players that came before her. She actually said that she began playing volleyball and fell in love with it after a rainbow wahine volleyball camp where her coach Kaylee Thoroughby uh, really put an impression on her. And from that moment Joining on, she knew she wanted court, to play here at the Jim, Center. The Higgins Center. Brothers I can't say enough good things about Taylor Higgins. She's such a great person and one of the best teammates I've ever had. It's really hard for me not to choke up looking at her. <laughs> I'm just so proud of her. Mom, put this on last Taylor Higgins joined by her family. Of course, her dad, James, actually played here at the University of Hawaii right there, giving her a lay. Her brother's Jeremy as well. Coming from a very athletic family, she said that oftentimes she got pulled into some of the football games with her brothers growing up, and she actually held her own. But Taylor Higgins definitely leaving her mark here as a rainbow wahine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Higgins. Our final senior came to UH after graduating from Kaiser High School. She has been an impact player for Hawaii since her first collegiate game against Texas when she tallied seven, 10 kills and six blocks in the upset. Since that game, she has gone on to earn 10 Big West Player of the Week awards, three All Big West First Team honors, and last year was named the Big West Player of the Year while earning ABCA All-America honors. She earned a spot on the United States national team that competed in the Pan American Cup in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic this past summer. In her four-year career at UH, she has appeared in 106 matches and tallied 367 total blocks, 654 digs, and is number eight in UH history with 116 service aces and number 12 all-time with 1,354 kills. She will miss all the friendships made, especially Emily and KG. And we really miss playing in front of the most amazing fans in the country. She will graduate this spring with a degree in communicology. Fans, one last time. Give it up for number 14 from Honolulu. Floor captain, Nikki. Sweet gesture there, Nikki Taylor giving the ball to Jimbo, James Buccella, longtime equipment manager for the Rainbow White Unit. But Nikki Taylor, what can you say about this young lady out of Kaiser High School who really learned how to play the sport from her brother Josh, who was playing at Punahou at the time, but Nikki Taylor making her own imprint on the volleyball world, becoming uh, such a great role model, again, for local players out there, and just the offensive power for the Wahine. Not only this year, but all the way back from her freshman Joining year. Joining Nikki on the court are parents Graham and Kim, by her father, sister Kylie, Graham and mother, Uncle Kim. Paul, and grandparents Nikki's Donna grown and so Taylor much as a person, as a player over Karen the years. Um, I'm so happy that she's able to play in front of her family, and they really appreciate all the time they have watching her, and we will continue to see good things from Nikki in the future, and that's really exciting. And we kind of mentioned in Game On about her skill set changed the way Rainbow Wahine volleyball was played. Forever, Hawaii was a left side hitting team. When she came, it changed because of what she's able to do, particularly attacking from the back row. 
And we saw that from her very first game as a Rainbow Wahine, playing on that right side against Texas, the number one team in the country, of course, Hawaii winning that epic battle her freshman year. And from that moment on, Nikki Taylor was a really a strong trademark presence on that right side for the Rainbow Wahine. And there you see the four seniors being honored right now here on the floor at the Stan Sheriff Center. Well, it's time now for the always emotional senior video. Stick around because we'll have more after this video. It was always a dream of mine to play for Dave and be on a Division I college team. I'm just grateful for being able to stay home and play in front of my family and friends. So that was a really big decision for me. Personally, I love making close connections to my teammates, and for me, they're not only my teammates, but we have like a special bond with each other, and I basically call them like my other sisters. I love meeting the young ones, and they're coming up and asking for pictures or autographs. It just makes my heart so happy, and it's good to be like a role model to them, and to show them that they can one day be where I'm at. I'll miss a lot of things, definitely the team, the girls. Um, they're really special to me, each and every one of them. They have a really big place in my heart. Dave, of course, he's unbelievable. Being able to play with him, for him, has just been an amazing experience. Um, overall, I think I'll just miss Walking into the stand every day and seeing everybody there. And I know I'll never be able to have that experience again. I think I've grown as a person and as a volleyball player. Um, I don't know, I just, I just think I've come a long way since, like school-wise and volleyball-wise. I've never experienced anything like the fans. I was so, like every game is so crazy, not just one. I've never like seen anybody that likes volleyball that much. I don't know, I think the fans in my team like make it all worth it. I'll probably miss like the closeness of everyone, like the, the workouts, even though those are tough, but like the workouts with Tommy and Tony and they're like so personal to us, like them and like the coaches and like my team and just playing for Hawaii. As a person, I learned how to be very selfless, something that, you know, I still am not always great at, um, but I try to be. And I learned, you know, how to have a mentality on the court that helped people to do their best rather than only looking to make myself be the best. And I definitely think that that is one of the main things that I personally want to take away. And that is kind of the thing that I also want to leave, um, you know, with my name here at UH was uh, not, you know, all of these records or remedial things of that nature, but, you know, just kind of that I was a person that really wanted to be um, an emotional support leader on the court. I got the greatest opportunity and the greatest blessing of being able to stay at home and, you know, have the flag, my flag, the Hawaiian flag on my back. And that was really something that I began to appreciate when I realized how hard of 
a task it is because you're always representing something. And I have the greatest honor of representing Hawaii. And that was one of the main things that I learned and really respected of being a part of the Rainbow Wahine. Staying home for me and choosing Hawaii was kind of a no-brainer just because the, the support and, you know, just the culture here it caters to Wahine Volleyball. And for me to, like, be a part of that and to, like, experience that it was kind of, um, you know, it was just, like, something I, I, I felt I had to do. So I, I saw, I watched them play when I was a young girl and growing up it was something that I never thought I could achieve personally. And then when I had the opportunity, I was really stoked and I was excited that I had that chance. So I had to take it. It's been incredible. Um, I've gotten to be around the people here and the teammates, the coaches, the staff members, everyone. They just, they do so much for this program and everyone genuinely cares about the girls and they truly, truly want what's best for the girls. I've become a better person, a better player. Um, just an all around, I've gained so much, more than just on the court, and uh, yeah, I'm grateful for that.